Examples of polysemy are foot. Now that can be of person, of bed, or of mountain, right? Or run, a person can run, water can run, or colors also run, right? So uh, the, this foot is also having multiple meaning. Like when you say foot, so it is foot of a person, foot of a bed, foot of a mountain, right? So all of them would have something similar. And what is that similarity? That they are uh, the part on which the the whole is standing or they are the lower most uh, part of the whole body now if we aren't sure whether different uses of single words or examples of hemanomy or polysemy we can check in a dictionary if the word has multiple meaning that is uh, is polysemous then there will be a single entry with a numbered list of different meaning of the word. Like if a word is written once in the dictionary and it has multiple meanings like one, two, three, four, five, like the whole list of meaning is given. It means the word is polysemous, right? And if two words are treated as homonyms, they will uh, typically have two separate entries, right? So in the dictionary, then they would have separate entries. Like we, we have talked about bank and bank. So in dictionary, you would find bank, its meaning. Then there would be again bank and its meaning. So this word is not polysemous word, but it is a homon, hom these are homonyms. This is a set of homonyms. But if we look at head, so it would be only one word head and it would have multiple entries of meaning like uh, it would be head of a man that is uh, that has brain in it and controls the whole body then the other entry would be the uh, you can say uh, man at the top of hierarchy in an institution is called head of that institution uh, the third entry would be uh, the you can say a man at the top of uh, any department in hierarchy is called head of the department. So if you have one word and multiple meaning in form of list, so it means uh, that word is a polysemous word. But if you have multiple entries of the words itself, so that would mean that these words are homonyms of each other. So if you're not sure about a word, whether it is a polysemous word or it is a uh, uh, you can say a set of homonyms you can check dictionary and uh, the characteristics which i told you that one word multiple entries means polysemous word and different entries of the same word that would mean homonyms okay now we can use uh, homonyms and uh, homophones homonyms and uh, polysemy uh, to just play with the words Right? So these last three lexical relations are the basis of a lot of wordplay, usually for humorous effects. Right? So you can use homonyms, homophones, and polysemy, and you can create what? You can create humorous effect. Now, if we make sense of riddle, now this riddle, why are trees often mistaken for dogs? Right? Why are trees often mistaken for dogs? And you know what is answer by by recognizing the a homonymy in the answer that is because of their bark. Now this bark is <coughs> this bark uh, uh, is a word that has its homonym as well. One bark is this loud cry of dog, right? Other bark is that outermost skin of uh, you can say. A stem of tree right so one is this loud cry of dog and the other word bark that means the outermost uh, skin of a stem of tree right so when we say why are trees often mistaken for dogs we say because of their barks right because of their barks means now either you you can consider that it is the loud cry or you can consider it is the outermost skin. Now, if this riddle was a bit difficult, then you can just look at the 
Next one. And if you are asked the following question, why is six afraid of seven? Right? Now this is a riddle again. Now you can ask, uh, you can answer the question and you say, because seven, eight, nine. Because seven, eight, nine. Eight means A-T-E. You can think it. Because seven has eaten nine. That is why six is afraid of seven. Right? Now this is how you read it. It's not actually six is afraid of seven. Rather it is only a riddle. Why is six afraid of seven? And the answer is because seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. So now six has become afraid of seven. Right? So now here we have this uh, effect of homophones. Like this eight is E-I-G-H-T, eight. But when we are pronouncing it, it appears as if we are using A-T-E-8, right? So this homophone is uh, creating this uh, effect of riddle. <coughs> now the next is, next lexical relation is metonymy. Now the relatedness of meaning found in uh, polysemy is essentially based on similarity. The head of a company is similar to head of a person on top of and controlling the body. Now this is what we have already discussed. There is another type of relationship between words based simply on a close connection in their everyday experience. <coughs> now it's not because of, you can say, as we have said, head is at the top and similarly, head of organization is at the top. Now we have another relationship that is because of a cl close connection on daily basis. Now that close connection can be based on a container con content relationship as is bottle and water. That is, as is can and juice. A whole part relationship as is call and, uh, car and wheels, as is house and roof. A representative simple relationship as is king and crown or the president and the white house. Right? Now we can use one to mean other. For example, you say, uh, he, he drank the whole bottle. Now he drank the whole bottle here means bottle is representing water, right? Because no one drinks bottle, rather you drink water. But because of their uh, relationship of everyday, you can say uh, close relationship, they are connected to each other. We can use one for the other. Or we say, uh, he was on wheels. He was on wheels. So no one is ever on wheels. Rather, it is uh, actually uh, the whole car on which you are traveling. Right? So whenever you say that he, he was on wheels, so that doesn't mean he was literally on wheels. Rather, he is on car. But you can use wheels because it is part of car and they have a relationship of togetherness and we can use one word instead of other. Similarly, when you say uh, own, uh, like uh, owning a, a roof is everyone's desire. Now, here roof means the whole house. Similarly, when you say the, the White House has decided now it's not the White House that is deciding, rather it is the president who has decided, right? <laughs> so this is actually the relationship of uh, metonymy, where the relationship between the words that is based on close connection in everyday experience, right? Okay, now using one of these words to refer to the other is an example of metonymy and we, we keep on using one instead of the other in daily life conversation. Now the next is the next relationship that is of collocations. Now a relationship between words that frequently occur together. Now there is no other relationship but in daily life we see that the words are occurring together. In metonymy we see that the objects were, were together like this Car and wheel are together, objects, not the words. 
house and roof are together bottle and water are together can and juice are together president and vice house are together right so it's not the birds which are together rather the connection is between the objects or the people uh, or or the things but here in collocation the words are together in, in daily life you say salt and pepper right you have uh, bread and butter you have dawn and dusk right now all of these are what all of these are uh, these words are together and because of their togetherness we actually have identified them as collocates of each other collocates means that they have this relationship of togetherness on daily on daily basis one way we see to organize our knowledge of words is simply on the basis of collocations are frequently occurring together right collocation means frequently occurring together words or the relationship of frequently occurring together now in recent years the study of which words uh, occur together and their frequency of occurrence has received a lot of a lot more attention in corpus linguistics right uh, study of such words now we we have seen that uh, this study was not previously there but nowadays we use corpus linguistics and we can easily find these relations like if you have a large corpus that represents uh, a lot of daily life conversation like millions of words are there and you find some collocates so see how two feelings they occur together right and they have become collocates so they are collocates because in daily life they very frequently they occur together right and this relationship of occurs to uh, occurring together that is called collocations and the words are called collocates to each other now that is all so if i just want to uh, if you just want to hear like what we have discussed we have discussed lexical relations we have discussed lexical relations synonymy uh, the first one was synonymy the second one was antonymy then we discussed hyponymy right prototypes homophones and homonyms polysemy and then how these can be used for word play metonymy and then the last relation was of collocations now you can ask questions